Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we do have a yellow wind warnings issued for later this coming working week as we are going to be seeing quite deep areas of low pressure run over the high pressure giving some very tight isobars in Scotland could be seeing some winchiness combined with very strong winds maybe 60, 70 or even 80 mile per hour gusts in places. We'll have a look at the UK if we go through the precipitation and the temperature in the next five days and also have a look at those wind gusts as it is remaining fairly dry in the south but turning increasingly wetter and actually quite a lot cooler further north as colder air masses coming in and out. Again nothing particularly potent but cool enough to give some wintriness once again for higher ground of Scotland. We'll then have a look at the GFS, GM, ECMWF and the ensembles for the longer range as we still have this signal for a big area of high pressure to be very influential into early February but the exact conditions that it eventually gives we're still very uncertain with it. Some runs still have low pressure coming in off the Atlantic giving mild and uh, wet and windy conditions. Others still have that high pressure over the top of us just centered over at the top giving generally very dry, uh, potentially milder or cooler conditions depending on the exact orientation. But again, um, a big contrast to mild, wet and windy in from the west. And there are still a few runs, and I do mean only a few, going for more of a colder, snowier pattern with that high pressure pushed further northwards, giving more easterly sort of flow. But I definitely think the favoured scenario more is the high pressure just sat over the top of us with weather fronts intruding from the west for Scotland and parts of Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland um, through early February. But of course, we'll have a look at those models in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So if we do start on the live radar, you can see it is generally a dry day for most of England and Wales. A few patches of drizzle under some thick clouding places. Most of the Republic of Ireland is dry, but apart from the far north and into parts of Scotland, it's turning a lot wetter as we do see a weather front sinking southwards. Now, the one thing is this weather front is decreasing in strength as it sinks southwards and eastwards. So by the time it gets into parts of England and Wales into tomorrow, it does look likely that it will just be areas of drizzle and thick cloud. Nothing really substantial at all as it does move in, coming up against that higher pressure. It will introduce cooler air and fresher conditions in general with some stronger gusty winds and showers. So generally behind this weather front, it will be turning more unsettled. But the south, um, pretty much south of um, the border between Scotland and England, that's where we're going to see sort of that very dry sort of conditions prevail. Now, if you put on the temperatures today as around 2 p.m., Again, it's not a particularly cold day, but it's not a particularly mild day. You can see some yellows in places, slightly milder than the last couple of days. But again, nothing too spectacular, slightly above average, maybe 8 to 10 degrees. You can see some parts of eastern Scotland, we're seeing a bit of a fern effect there, where we're seeing that uh, westerly wind coming up over the higher ground, descending, warming up, and you can see isolated pockets of sort of 10 to 12 degrees there. But elsewhere, seeing areas of yellow, but also some lighter blues as well, indicating that it is still cool in places, but again, nothing too much from the average for this time of year. Now, if you look at the weather warnings, we do have this yellow warning issued for much all of Scotland through Tuesday and Wednesday from 8 p.m. on Tuesday evening until 9 a.m. on Wednesday. Very strong winds expected to bring some disruption to parts of Scotland. Again, there could be an ample warning issued for this. From looking at the raw models, there could be an ample warning issued. Um, generally, sort of 80 mile per hour gusts normally get the amber warning, uh, and we are seeing the potential for that um, into Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, to turn on the further details, you can see a deep area of low pressure is expected to pass to the north of Scotland later on Tuesday, clearing away to the east during Wednesday. While at this stage there is some uncertainty regarding the onset of the strongest winds and to what extent more populated areas of the central belt are also infected. This will bring a swathe of very strong winds to parts of Scotland. Gusts of 60 miles per hour could be expected widely, but there could be some gusts as high as 80 miles per hour. You can see it is a high, high impact, low likelihood. So if that certainty 
on a lot likelihood on that 80 mile per hour does increase we could see an app warning issued but again that will all depend on what the models show in the next day or so uh, just at this stage just expect potential for very strong winds uh, and highly likely generally gusty winds out there now if you go over to the UKV and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, if we do run through, you can see that weather front sinking southwards, but as it heads into part of England, Wales and the Rob of Ireland, it does disintegrate just into area of thicker cloud and a bit of drizzle. Behind it into Scotland, we're seeing some wintry showers and generally unsettled conditions, gusty conditions as well, pushing in for eventually turning drier. Another weather system tries to push in through Monday, but you can see for any areas further southwards, it just disintegrates into just an area of thicker cloud, maybe some patchy drizzle there at times as it moves through, and maybe some lighter rain in the southwest. Through Tuesday evening to Wednesday, you see some very heavy showers, and some of these heavy wintry showers in Scotland. Uh, again, this is where we can see those very strong gusty winds with that low pressure system. Again, look the uh, mean sea level pressure you can see very strong um, uh, isopars there very tight isopars giving very strong westerly winds uh, but if we go to that's the precipitation you can see just generally it is within a showery outlook so it could be some blizzard conditions over higher ground but elsewhere it will be rain as we head into wednesday more rain pushing in from the west, uh, but again, really only impacting northern areas. And eventually in the longer range, we could see more precipitation for south. But again, nothing more than just some lighter rain with the main bulk of precipitation in the north. But it does look likely towards the end of the week, it is turning a lot cloudier as well, which is not a particularly great thing to be seeing. So if you go over to the temperatures now, we can see that over the course of this afternoon, the temperatures are peaking around that 8 to 10 degree mark. So average to slightly above. Overnight tonight, temperatures won't drop down too far with thicker cloud. And into tomorrow afternoon, those temperatures will widely be more towards average, sort of 6 to 9 degrees. Again, nothing too cold, nothing too mild. As we head into Tuesday, overnight temperatures in the far south could drop to around freezing and clearer skies, but where we see cloud, uh, no chance at all. Through Tuesday afternoon, cool in the north, milder in the south, maybe 8 to 10 degrees in the far south, around freezing over many parts of higher ground in Scotland. And then through Tuesday evening, that's why we could see those blizzard conditions, uh, a lot of showers and very strong winds into early hours of Wednesday. And then through Wednesday afternoon, you can see again, 8 to 10 degrees in the south, low single digits further northwards for the first day of February and then overnight again mild in the south with generally mild air mass moving in for Thursday so well above average there 10 to 12 degrees still cooler further northwards but still probably above average and then eventually overnight into Friday not dropping down all too much and you can see from the upper air temperatures quite a mild air mass is moving in there nothing ridiculously mild but generally quite mild because the mean sea level pressure high pressure is building in but because the flow is coming straight in off the Atlantic the air towards the surface is quite mild indeed if we do just briefly have a look at those wind gusts through Tuesday evening into Wednesday, you can see how we've got 50, 60, maybe 70 mile per hour gusts moving in for a time. And then eventually into Tuesday night into Wednesday, you can see an area of maybe 70, 80, or maybe even 90 miles per hour for the far north of Scotland there. So it could be from very, very gusty winds in places. So it could be quite dangerous out there. And we'll keep an eye on these model runs. Uh, again, they could moderate, go down to maybe 70 or 80, or they could intensify, keeping this 80, 90, or even higher than that, and becoming maybe even more widespread as well. Luckily, again, falling overnight, but again, it could mean people wake up Wednesday morning and there could be issues on the roads, trees down, things like that. So we will have to see, still a good few days out, and we'll have to see whether we see an upgrade in the actual wind speeds and we see any change in the warnings as well. Now, if we do go over to the GFS and see what that is showing over the course of the next couple of weeks, uh, again, you can see a westerly flow at the moment. That brief northwesterly flow with cold air coming in there, that small low pressure system to the northeast of Scotland, giving a very tight ice pass, and that sort of stormy spell there through Tuesday night into Wednesday. Beyond that, high pressure actually starts to build back in, and you see by the end of the week, high pressure is in control, bit of an easterly flow, so chilly continental flow for areas in the south and the east, but we repeatedly see low pressure trying to shove it away from the west. And it does make some inroads for a time in the far north and west, but not really all too much um, before eventually as we head into sort of almost middle of February low pressure does push in but just high pressure comes back and builds in again so pretty much it is a high uh, high pressure fest here but 
definitely more inclined for that high pressure in the south and the east for the northwards and westwards incursions of low pressure precipitation and cooler um, wetter air masses uh, looking more likely again very subtle shifts can change this gfs definitely more uh, favoring that westerly influence than some other runs we have seen recently which has produced more of a high pressure block that high pressure is still there just not as influential um, today now, if you look at the GEM, see how that does compare. Uh, again, high pressure in control at the moment. Again, we're seeing low pressure coming in from the northwest over the couple of the next couple of days. High pressure building in, trying to extend northwards. And at day 10, still in control, generally in the south, but low pressure trying to move in in the north. This brief little low here could, will try and move in before we've got another high pressure system building in behind it. So again, GEM, similar to the GFS, still generally quite dry, quite settled in the south and the east, further northwards and westwards, high pressure influencing most of the time, but still seeing low pressure making inroads. Could see a little stalling weather fronts there trying to come in from the west before dying out. If you do look at the ECMWF now, see how that does compare. Again, a westerly flow in the next couple of days, high pressure building back in, and much more of a dominant high pressure flow here from the ECMWF with an easterly flow. And you can see again, generally mild upper air conditions, but most likely we'll see an inversion at the surface. We go to the United Kingdom, look, put on those two meter temperatures, you can see very cold through central England under that high pressure. So likely with this scenario, an inversion would take place. So it would be relatively cool. And in the day there, sea temperatures only one or two degrees. So this would actually be very cold. But again, no chance of anything snowy at all. It would be frosty and foggy and just cold feeling conditions out there under this higher pressure. So again, different scenarios. And again, not every, every different scenario has its sort of upsides and its downsides. You know, high pressure scenario sat over the top of us, like this run would be very dry, probably a lot of clear skies would be pretty pleasant, but the temperatures would be very cold and there'd be a lot of frost, fog, and maybe ice overnight. A uh, different scenario with the high pressure further eastwards would mean, yes, it'd be probably slightly milder, but the north and west would see a lot more rain and probably a lot of clouds spreading in as well. So again, it's, you know, deciphering what is the best conditions. Um, definitely probably would favour the high pressure over the top of us, but we will have to see. Now, if you go over to the... Uh, Ensembles now, you can see generally over the next couple of weeks, we are average to slightly above or even slightly below at times. So again, not deviating from average too much. And when we do go slightly above average, we're under higher pressure. So probably cooler towards the surface with an inversion. Definitely that precipitation signal in the longer term has decreased over the last couple of days. We saw it increasing earlier this week, thinking we could go quite mild, wet and windy. But that high pressure influence has definitely ramped up the last few days. And that's why we're pretty confident now, at least for the south and the east, high pressure will be the dominant feature for at least the next week, maybe even longer. You can see there are still some very cold runs. Again, that's pushing those easterly winds in. But again, not, it's still in the minority, not really increasing or decreasing. Uh, we'll just have to see if it does uh, increase or decrease in strength into the middle of February. Definitely as a scenario, but not really favoured. Look at the two metre dew points. Again, not deviating too much from freezing, so showing it's generally cool air masses, no sort of mid-Atlantic air masses, which would be sort of five to 10 degrees, um, generally around that zero to five degree mark. And you look at the sea level pressure, again, relatively high pressure, majority of the runs around 1,020 millibars and above. So showing high pressure is generally in control. But you compare it to Glasgow, you can see there is more of a lower pressure influence, more of those ensemble runs in the mean down to about 1,000, and 10 or lower than that so in more influence of lower pressure there and if you just finish by having a look at the ecmwf ensemble members you can see once again generally around average maybe small above average from the ecmwf here but still a few of those anomalous cold runs in the long term and a very dry outlook as well so pretty similar from both the ensemble runs here and relatively similar from all the operational runs slight deviations in the position of the high pressure but the overall outlook is very similar so it's looking likely high pressure will dominate in the south and east to the extent it will dominate will decide whether it's generally mild uh, and dry or whether it's quite cold frosty foggy um, and dry further northwards and westwards looking likely to have some sort of low pressure influence but to the extent of that low pressure influence we'll have to see near the time but definitely high pressure 
will be in control quite a bit of the time so there will be drier spells but there also probably will be incursions of weather fronts as well like this coming week where areas in the north are going to be quite blustery perhaps blizzard can issue the high ground very rainy as well areas 50 to 100 miles further southwards it's going to be nice and dry so we'll have to see what happens but definitely high pressure into the start of february looks the highest uh, likelihood at this stage so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon